Hi again everybody. Today I'm going to review this Rigel DS1052E oscilloscope, which originally is a 50 MHz oscilloscope, but uh, I've modified the firmware and installed the DS1102E firmware, which makes it a 100 MHz oscilloscope. So now I can measure signals up to 100 MHz, which is great. Uh, the oscilloscope comes with two probes. These are uh, regular probes where the tip can be removed and then you have a pogo uh, pin for probing or the normal tip which you can attach. The probes connect directly into the BNC connector and uh, then you are ready to measure. So uh, let's turn on the scope and see what happens. At power up you'll see the uh, splash screen showing the DS1000 series and then you get to the main screen. This main screen consists of a grid which is the current oscilloscope readings being shown here. In the top we see Rigel and we see weight blinking because it's measuring, it's waiting on a signal and uh, then we have a bar indicating in which uh, frame we are, we are viewing currently uh, because it has some internal storage, it's a storage scope so we can move this frame. Um, the great thing about this is that you are able to uh, measure and record a signal and then you can view the different parts of it by moving uh, this specific area, view area. In the bottom corner we uh, see that channel 1 is selected we are currently measuring on channel 1. We can see the time base which I can adjust using the scale button here and here. This is for the time base and this is for the uh, voltage uh, limit voltage base. If I turn on this, turn this, uh, you'll see that the time base changes. And because this is a 100 megahertz scope, I can go down to two nanoseconds, where the normal DS1052 can only go down to. 5 nanoseconds. Uh, you'll also notice that on the screen I have the frequency enabled. That's because I've enabled the measure uh, function up here, which is the function panel. It consists of six buttons measure, acquire, storage, cursor, display, and utility. Utility is for settings, while uh, the other yeah, it's kind of settings too, but it's functions you can enable. Measure, when clicking that, you'll see on the screen a menu appears. This screen indicates uh, which measure settings is enabled. Currently, our source is channel 1. And then we can go to time if we want to add the frequency setting. And we can then uh, use the wheel to change the setting which we want to enable. For example, if we want to measure uh, the voltage of our input signal, we can go to voltage and select Vmax or Vpp which is the difference, voltage difference. Now Vpp has uh, been enabled, it is shown down at the bottom, so uh, let's try to input a signal. I'll take the test signal, the probe connecting to the test signal, and then let's see what happens. Oh, now you'll notice that uh, my scope stopped because I enabled the trigger function. I'll come back to that, I'll just reset it. Then I click run and we'll see the uh, current frequency. For now it is 
in two nanoseconds, so we can't see it. So we click uh, auto, and it automatically changes the view. Now, you'll notice the frequency counter which we enabled from measure is shown as uh, 1000 kilohertz, and the voltage is 3.12 volt. So that's a great thing of the measure button. We can also go to the cursor button and enable a cursor which we can move. By clicking uh, the cursor we have to select which cursor we would like and I would like a manual one. Then we get a manual one the positions are shown and I can use this to move the cursor. Currently we are moving the uh, Y axis see here for uh, the top cursor A. Uh, we can set it just for an example here and I press cursor B and I can move that up to here. Then I change it to uh, X and we can move it and the same with cursor B. Now you notice I just pressed this button once it changes these states of which cursor is selected. This is a great function because you can do the measurement yourself using cursors if you want to measure specific uh, parts of the reading. We can also select uh, auto mode. Well, you see the cursor is just being up and down there. Okay, let's disable the cursor and then uh, let's have a look at the acquire function. The acquire function up here enables us to do different samplings. We can change the sample depth, the memory depth of how many samples are uh, acquired and stored into the internal RAM. This is great if you're looking at big uh, waves, big uh, samples else you can uh, set the memory depth to la long, uh, large, long, and then you can stop, for example, and then you can start viewing this by moving the position slider. You'll then see in the upper of the display, we move the view frame as I told you about before. This is great if uh, the oscilloscope is used as a logic analyzer. Okay, now if we go to storage, we can also store these waveforms on a USB stick, for example. This is great if you want to upload uh, files or just uh, carry, save the readings on your computer. Those readings can be saved both both as uh, Excel, as comma separated files, or as normal bitmap files. But uh, let's try to plug in a USB stick down here. Oops. Yeah. Then we'll get the possibility to save it externally. So if we click external. Oh. Uh, we click storage, external. We'll see the current files on the memory stick and we can press a uh, new file. Back at uh, this storage, currently waveform is selected. We can select other files, for example the bitmap or comma separated file. I'll just uh, save a bitmap from now. So we select bitmap, external, and then we press new file. Then we can enter a file name by using the uh, scroll button. And when we are ready, like that, we press save. Now the image file has been saved. 
which we can see there, and we can now view the image file on the computer. Okay, uh, then let's have a look at the math function. The math function on the scope enables the scope to do different math calculations. For example, you can do FFT analysis on a signal which is currently enabled and you'll see here in the bottom we have the FFT shown of this one kilohertz signal that's also why uh, let me disable those there you'll see that the one kilohertz signal is shown we can enable the cursor as I told you before in manual and then we can select that we would like to do uh, it on the FFT analysis by pressing the source button and then selecting FFT. Now I'll change to X and you'll see that I can set the cursor to this mark. Then in the upper corner I can read that this is 1000 kilohertz. So that is also the frequency we measured. This is great if you're measuring on sounds. As a last thing, I would like to uh, show you the uh, trigger function, which is over here. When this is pressed, we get a menu which shows us the trigger function we can enable. Uh, for now, I'll disable the FFT. And then, if we uh, press the trigger again, you'll see that we have different uh, possibilities, functions to enable. For now, we select channel, and we would like to trigger on the edge, though we can trigger on different other things. Uh, we would like to trigger on the rising edge, and then, to enable the trigger function, we have to set this to normal or single. Triggering is normally also always on because when we are measuring on this signal let, uh, I'll keep it on auto and then run then you'll notice that uh, it always uh, triggers on this rising edge it's always enabled and that's uh, why this signal is so stable it's because it's triggering but let's go back to trigger and then set this to single now that you notice that actually the oscilloscope has stopped uh, recording so it records a memory uh, assembles a couple of samples in the memory and then it stops so you can view the samples when the, you then want to start sampling again you press start and when it gets uh, a rising edge it records till the memory buffer is full and then it stops this is especially great for uh, logic analyzing because you can uh, record a signal when it's changing and then you can view the different uh, information recorded. You can also do recording on two channels while triggering on one channel and then read the other channel at the same uh, time so you can compare the two. This is, yeah, this is great. So, uh, in my opinion, this is a great scope. Uh, it's an inexpensive but very functional scope. I use it uh, very much uh, for debugging and uh, measuring on different signals, and it have uh, already it has already helped me a lot uh, finding different problems. So, uh, yes, this is indeed a great scope. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, short uh, review and uh, demonstration of this uh, Rigel DS1052E. Thank you. TKJ Production.